Hi, I'm Matthew Reynolds. Uh, I'm taking the advanced lab with Dr. Moho this semester, and I had the opportunity to use the saturated absorption uh, spectroscopy experiment. And what I did for this setup is I had this laser here, which uh, produces an infrared uh, laser from a diode, and um, it comes through here, passes through a neutral density filter, which just kind of um, attenuates the beam, and then it goes through a beam splitter. Uh, and I'm not going to focus what's over here right now, but when it shoots through this rubidium cell, which has uh, rubidium, gas, and metal in an equilibrium, it's picked up by the detector over there. And um, what you can see is that these peaks each correspond to the um, absorption of the um, rubidium ions as they um, absorb the light and then they re emit it. And we can see on this camera screen over here um, that we're actually getting um, absorption going on. So what's going on is that each dip down means that there's less transmittance going on, or there's more absorption. Um, and this is nice, but the problem with it is that it's not super fine, because what's going on is that these lines right here have a certain width to them. That um, This scales in uh, milliseconds, but what it really means is change in wavelength. Um, and it's pretty wide for uh, what we would like. And um, if we want to actually... Why is it wide enough? Why is it wide? Well, it's because there's an effect called Doppler broadening, where you have certain atoms that are going um, one way and some that are going the other way, and those actually produce a Doppler shift and it changes it. So actually, all of these ones are being picked up as different, but um, what we can do is get it so that only the ones, only the atoms that are in the same plane are um, producing the light um, as are being picked up, I think. And um, what that does is um, gets rid of the Doppler broadening. So if I Remove this card right you, You're going to remove that card? Okay. Yep, so what will happen is it'll go around, and there are little peaks that just showed up. Um, and what I can do is just change the balance. So what it does is it just subtracts the signals from two photo detectors I have. I can do some adjustments right here. If I zoom in, I can see if that, that, that's pretty good. Um, and I'll zoom in on this big um, sextet right here, um, which is six peaks. Wow, that's the fine structure. That's the that's the structure that's sitting at the bottom of the rock, Doppler broadened peak. Yep. Wow. Um, so this is sitting within those peaks. Each of these corresponds to the, the hyperfine structure. Um, and that's pretty cool because now we can see um, where the actual peaks lie. And yeah, but we knew where the peaks lie. This is useless. I mean, we don't know the energy separation of them. Well, yeah. So what we can do then is we can use this setup here um, where... See this, this light coming through from this mirror goes through a beam splitter. 50% of the light goes through here, but 50% um, of the light goes back through here into the uh, fabry perot cavity. Oh, that's a fabry perot cavity. So what that does Ooh. is it acts kind of like a whistle. So you're saying the fabry perot is a whistle? Yeah, so what happens is that the um, only the wavelengths that, were the, um, course that are in uh, harmonic with the cavity um, are passed through it. I mean, because what it is, it's a cavity of highly reflective mirrors, um, and only a small amount of the light actually gets out. Uh, and so what I can do is I can turn on this channel 2 right here, which is coming from the other photo detector, and I have these... At the end of the peaks. photo cavity. Yep. Well, and I have these peaks here, and if I zoom out kind of, you can see that they occur regularly. Wow. What that means is that knowing the length of the cavity, we can do some simple calculations, really, and we can pick up the... Um, we can pick up the change in wavelength um, associated with this channel 2 right here. And what that means is that because it's on the same oscilloscope reading, we can um, figure out the distance of the splitting in the hyperfine structure of rubidium. That's um, fantastic. That's pretty great. That's just unbelievable. OK, yeah. so it lo looks like you learned something. Yeah, I learned a lot. <laughs> <With> this stuff. <laughs> is three weeks enough? Three weeks, is, three, three weeks is enough for what I did with this. Um, but there's other things we can try. Um, there's other things we can try. Yeah, you can things. also, there's also things we can do with magnetic field. Um, and what that will what do is actually change the splitting of these. Um, each of them will kind of split into two, and I did that with the, um, by passing a current through these Humboldt's coils around the rubidium cell. Wow. Um, and I got, I collected data from that too. Okay, thanks very much, Matt. Yep. Bye. Thanks, bye.